Introduction to the Excel PC software. The Excel software is used with IAI's fully programmable controller line. These controllers include the XL, A-cell, P-cell, and S-cell, as well as many older cell controllers. The XL software is fully programmable and can perform many of the same functions as a small PLC. The XL software is broken up into several different screens. This tutorial will go over the basics of how to use the XL software and write a small program. For a full list of commands and information on the XL software, please consult the II manual for your controller. The Excel software is program based. The position information is stored inside the position table and the programs will call or reference this position information. Symbols are used to name positions, programs, variables, etc. to make reading and troubleshooting programs very easy. At the top you will see a safety speed drop down menu. The safety speed is always defaulted as on. The safety speed is set inside the parameters and will limit the speed of your actuator to 250 millimeters per second. When testing programs, make sure to turn off this safety speed to see the actual program speed, as a faster program speed may alter the path of your robot. First, let's take a look at the position table. From the position table, you can turn on off the servos, jog the actuator, teach positions, and for scare robots, you can change the arm and coordinate systems. Teaching positions is easy. You could do it one of three different ways. The first method is to simply type in the axis information for each individual axis. The second method is to turn the servos on and jog the actuator to the location that you want to teach. Once you have the actuator in the correct location, you can teach the information one of two different ways. There is a Teach Current Position button under each axis. When you press this button, it will grab the current location of that axis and store it inside the position table. The second method is to click the checkbox next to each axis that you would like to teach. When the boxes are selected, you can press the Teach All button up at the top of the screen. The third method to teaching positions is to turn the servos off and position the actuator by hand. Since the power on the motor and encoder is separated, you can move the actuator with the servos off and the encoders will still follow the positions. You teach the positions the same way that you did in the second method. Once the change has been made, it will show up in red. To download it to the controller, press the Download to Controller button. This is always located right next to the Save As button. Once you've made a change, it will ask you if you want to save that information to the flash ROM. The flash ROM is battery backed up and will save all your program, symbol, position, coordinate, and parameter files. If you are using a Scara robot, pay attention to the correct arm system. The Scara robot can be used in left or right arm mode. The arm system is important when trying to reach certain positions or trying to avoid interferences in the work envelope. The arm systems can be switched on the fly or with a certain command. For more information on the Scara arm systems, please consult the II manual. You can move your robot to specific positions using the position data screen. Simply highlight the position you want to move to and make sure that the checkboxes next to the axes you want to move are selected. Then click the Move to Specific Position button. The actuator will move to that specific position and stop. If you want to move consecutively, you can move the Move Continuously button. This will move the actuator from position to position until it finds a blank position number. The actuator will continue to move until you've press the stop button. In the position table, you'll see a velocity, acceleration, and deceleration column. If a velocity is set inside this column, it will override the velocity that is inside the program. This is used for positions that you need to move faster or slower than the rest of the program speed. You may notice that many of the positions in this position table have names. These names are referred to as symbols. To edit the symbols, you can go to Symbol, Edit and this will open up the symbol editor screen. You can create a symbol for all data types, integers, real variables, integer and real constants, flags, input ports, output ports, program numbers, tag numbers, subroutines, position numbers, and even axis numbers can have symbols. Once a data type has been assigned a symbol, this symbol is now interchangeable with the number. For example, in my program, I can say move to position 1 or move to position pick. Both will move the actuator to position 1. 
Symbols are case sensitive. The Excel controller has data types such as integer and real variables. These variables can be used to store number information such as position data, cycle times, part counts, etc. The information inside these variables can be manipulated using many math and position commands. There are two types of data, global and local. The global variables are used in every program, where a local variable is only used by that particular program. Global integer or whole numbers can be stored in variables 200 to 299. Global real or decimal numbers are stored in variables 300 to 399. The Excel controller also has discrete inputs and outputs available. The program can turn on these outputs and monitor inputs to control the outside equipment. The inputs start at point 0 to 299 and the output parts are from 300 to 399. There are also a flag data type. A flag is an internal output that is used for program flow and can indicate a task is complete or a program is running. The flags are stored in variables 600 to 899. The II cell type controller can store up to 64 or 128 programs, depending on your controller type. Up to 16 programs can be ran simultaneously for multitasking applications. Now let's take a look at the program screen and go over each column to make sure that you understand what they mean. The first column we will talk about is the command column. The command column is used to complete a command. A full list of commands with examples is available in the II programming manual. The command is mnemonically based, meaning it should closely resemble what the command is trying to do. For example, the home command is HOME. The command to move the actuator is MOVP or MOVL, de depending on the move profile. Setting the velocity is VEL, etc. If you need to look up a command, you can simply double click on the command line. This will bring up a full list of commands available for your controller, as well as information as such as what type of data the command uses in operand 1 and operand 2, if it can have a condition, what type of command it is, etc. Operand 1 and operand 2 are used by the command. The data type for operand 1 and operand 2 varies depending on what command is used. For an example, a move P command uses a position number in operand 1. A let command is used to store information into a variable. So an operand 1 of a let command is the variable you want to store the information to. An operand 2 of the let command is the value that you want to store inside the variable. For example, let 200 0 is the same as saying store value 0 into variable 200. If you do not know what kind of data type the command is looking for, you can double click on the command line and it will give you that information. The CMD line or condition line is used for program flow. A condition can be a flag or an input. To read a condition line, it is best to use the word if. For example, if input 2 is on, go to tag 2. If input 2 is not on, it will skip the command. The N column is used for a not condition. If input 2 is not on, execute the command. The E column is the expansion column. An A can be put in the expansion column for an AND command. If input 3 is on and flex flag 600 is on, execute the command. An O can be placed in the expansion column to be used as an OR statement. If input 3 is on or flag 600 is on, execute the command. The PST or POST column is used to turn on an output or flag POST the move. The PST column is used in palletizing and special commands. If the command is true, the post column will execute. The comment column allows you to comment or describe what the command is doing. If the comment line is not big enough, you can turn any line into a comment by right-clicking and saying set comment. This will allow you to type in more information than the comment line allows. This method can also be used to temporarily remove lines of code without deleting them. Simply right-click on the line that you want to temporarily remove and say set comment. This will set the, the line as a non-executable line. In the future, if you want to change this line back to an executable line, simply right-click on it and say release comment. This will put it back to an executable style command. Now let's take a look at this quick program. At the beginning of the program, you need to home all single axes that are not absolute type. The home command is HOME. 
And operand one is looking for an axis pattern. For example, if you have three axes, you can home axes one and three by putting in a value of 101 in operand one. If you want to home all axes, operand one will be 111. After all the axes are homed, you need to set the program speed. VEL sets the velocity in millimeters per second. ACC and DCL are the commands for setting the A cell and D cell in G. These are the standard velocities. If you are using a scarer robot, there are two motion profile types, continuous path and point to point. CP moves will move the target position via mutual interpolation. All axes will start and stop at the same time using a VEL command or millimeters per second velocity. A point-to-point -point or PTP move will move all axes with a percentage of max speed. The motion will be less of a linear path and more of a rounded path. Since there are different motor wattages, some axes may finish their move before others do. The PTP move uses VELS, ACCS, and DCLS commands, which take a percentage value. If you are using both CP and PTP type moves in your program, you must set both the VEL, ACC, DCL, and the VELS, DCLS, and ACLS velocities. Look at this simple program. At the beginning of the program, you will need to home all single axes that are not absolute type and not a scare or robot. The home command is HOME and operand 1 is looking for an axis pattern. After all the axes are homed, you need to set the program speed. VEL sets the velocities in millimeters per second. ACC and DCL set the A cell and D cell in G. These are the standard velocities. If you're using a scare robot, if you are using both CP and PTP type moves in your program, you must set both the VEL, ACC, DCL, and the VELS, DCLS, and ACLS. Once the velocity is set, you can initialize all variables and turn off all flags and outputs used inside the program. On line 8 of my program, I turn off output 303. On line 9 of the program, variable 200 will be initialized to a value of 0. The program will start at tag 1. If input 2 is on, we will jump down to tag 2. If input 2 is not on, we will skip that line. If input 2 is not on and input 3 is on, we will jump down to tag 3. If neither of these conditions are true, we will jump back up to tag 1 and try again. If input 2 is on, we will jump down to tag 2. We will first wait on input 5. As soon as input 5 turns on, we will move to position 2 via a PTP type move and turn on output 303 via the post column. Once this is complete, we will add 1 to the variable 200 as a part count. We will then compare variable 200 to the value 5. If the value 5 is stored in variable 200, we will turn on flag 600. If flag 600 is on, we will go to tag 1. If flag 600 is not on, we will jump back up to tag 2 and execute that loop until we've ran it five times. Once we've jumped back up to tag 1, if input 2 is off and input 3 is on, we will jump to tag 3. It will run a path move, which moves consecutively from position 3 to 4 to 5, etc. until it reaches position 10. Once that's complete, we will jump back up to tag 1. This is a quick, simple program that should show you how to use each column in the position table. You can monitor the current state of the inputs and outputs as well as see what values are stored in the variables by using the monitor menu. As you can see from the monitor menu, you can monitor the task status, the system status, the access status, your input ports, your output ports, as well as your global integers, real numbers, and string variables. Also from the monitor window, you can look at the detailed error information. The detailed error information stores all of the detailed errors with error codes, if it happened on a particular program, the step number of the program, the particular axis it happened on, as well as the three-letter or three-digit code for the error message. 
You can use this three-digit error code to look up the error inside the II programming manual as well as on the II website. This was just a brief tutorial to introduce you to the Excel software. For full programming instructions, please consult your II programming manual, which is available on the II website. If you have any further questions, please contact your local IAI office.